world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Uh, I'm talking to Say Rhodes, uh, who's just uh, done a documentary for Channel 4. It'll be on on Monday, 10 o'clock on Channel 4, as I said before, looking at the history of um, uh, and looking into why maybe people of colour distrust or have so much mistrust when it comes to medicine and vaccines. Say was uh, telling us about how he went back to Alabama and uh, the the father of gyne- uh, uh, J. Marion uh, Sims did a lot of his experimenting on slave women um, back in, you know, in the days of slavery and how still uh, women of color, both in the US and the UK, are, I believe, five times more likely to die during pregnancy and childbirth. So this distrust, this lack of trust in, in medical um, uh, experimentation, if you like, or vaccines, doesn't just come from anywhere. And as I said in the introduction, if you just think, oh, that's history, that's so long ago, think again, uh, say, rejoins me now. Say, um, you, we, we talked about the, what happened during the days of slavery, but uh, coming back to, for instance, the, the trials around, the so-called medical trials around syphilis um, mm. and how people, it, uh, just just tell us a bit about the evilness. Uh, that's the only word I can think of, the evil. Well, I think, yeah, the study, you're, the study you're referring to was called uh, the United States Public Health Service study into untreated syphilis in the Negro male. Um, their, their, their premise was that black people were, uh, you know, morally inferior and therefore prone to sexually transmitted diseases like syphilis. So they figured it'd be a good population to study. They got uh, a group of black men who had syphilis, told them they were being treated. Um, but actually marked on their medical records that they must not receive under uh, any treatment for syphilis under any circumstances. They then went decades, these men, um, regularly going to the doctor with various complaints and so on, never receiving treatment, but always being told they were. Um, The point of this experiment was that those men should die of syphilis. That was the whole idea. So that then they could have a post-mortem, they could open them up and they could see what syphilis does to the body. And of course, they um, spread it. They would have been unknowingly spreading it as well, being oh, told, oh, you're, you're being treated. Tricia, some of those men um, fought for America during the war. They came to Europe, some of those guys. I, I, I dread to think what, what happened. And obviously, within their communities, yes, wives and girlfriends contracted the disease. Babies were born with syphilis, Tricia, um, because of this experiment. And, uh, you know, it went on from the 40s to the 70s. It ended only because a journalist broke the story. The doctors were happily quoting this this experiment and this this uh, study in in papers and in, in in journals and so on. The academics were talking about it, but the public didn't know. And when they found out, they quickly wound up the experiment in seventy two. It's that's the thing. People say oh, that was back then, nineteen seventy two. I mean, I was I was at school still. I was a teenager. Nineteen seventy two ain't that long ago. Now, Absolutely. <laughs> During the war, they they did, you know, we think, oh, that's the Americans, that's the Americans. But Britain also has a history, does it not? The way uh, they experimented with the Indian soldiers who had, part, as part of the empire, bravely volunteered to fight for the empire. And they got mm-hmm. repaid with, with this. Well, yeah, they were, um, they were experimented on. They had mustard gas experimented on them, um, on their eyes. Uh, on their genitals, um, or the, and that they suffered horrible injuries. Um, the, the idea, again, was the British were trying to figure out if Indians were more susceptible to mustard gas. Uh, they were hoping that they might be, because then mustard gas could be used in uh, in war against Indian populations. Wow, wow, um, wow, wow, wow. So that's, that's the point of that study. But, Tricia, this isn't all just about history, you know. So a lot of this goes mm. through to the modern day. My family, um, I've got family in Africa, and a lot of the drug trials that take place happen in Africa. Um, many people don't know this, but if, um, if you've got family in Africa, they'll tell you because actually it is incredibly common um, for a group of, 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 sort of men in white coats to turn up and say, oh, we've got this uh, potentially fantastic cure for X, Y or Z. Um, we, we need some people to test it on. But what happens is if, if you've got HIV and you are um, at a really bad stage of your illness and you, you take part in a drug trial and the drug helps you, when the trial's over, they go away, they take their drugs, 
And if that drug does get released, you probably can't afford it. So I've, I've yeah. met, I met somebody whose, whose uncle died in pain, knowing that the drug he had trialed that worked so fantastically for him for two years was now available to HIV sufferers in the West, but he could not afford it. it oh I mean, my. you know, she, this, this lady remembers her mother, who's uh, this man's sister, saying that if she sold everything she had, she could only afford two months' worth of treatment. Oh. And there was no way for them to get back in touch with the people who ran the trial. Imagine how that makes people feel. And then you tell them, mm. we've got this vaccine. Uh, we, we've tested it a bit, but, you know, here, here, have this vaccine. How do you think yeah. people feel? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And they're still talking to family, obviously family, and, and it doesn't matter how many people they're told, this is safe by government you know over the years till now they've heard that message this is safe by governments who've then gone on to exploit as you say people who fought for the country uh, people who work for the country and people who uh, uphold the rules and the laws of the country um you did look at the other side as to how that uh, understandable lack of trust is is being exploited by anti-vaxxers mm. uh, robert kennedy and what have you and and they're tying it all together with black rights matter and what have you so it, again being uh, taking that that fear and using it mm. yeah absolutely and that's probably the most dangerous thing here um, because so few people know about these these episodes in history they can be weaponized by anti-vaxxers. If the first person who ever told you that actually the US government has conducted experiments and, uh, on syphilis or has you know, these drug trials, if the first person who told you about that was then using that information to convince you not to take a vaccine, that's powerful. That's really mm -hmm. powerful. Whereas um, what I'm hoping is that if we can discuss it openly on radio shows, have documentaries on TV, and people can learn about these things uh, in context, we might be able to stop it leading, you know, down the anti-vax path. But yeah, you're right. People like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. have absolutely had a field day with this stuff. Yeah, they are, and, and again, ex recently exploited the fears of, of Jewish people, talking about likening things to the Holocaust. I mean, they literally will use the, the the grief and trauma of anybody to further, you know, what what they believe. Um, uh, so, as I said before, this is on Channel Four on uh, ten o'clock on uh, Monday. Um, the yeah. the obvious question to end with is: Have you been vaccinated? I've been vaccinated. Of course, I have, Tricia. I had to yeah, delay for a little bit because I was travelling. Um, but yeah, came back and, and I got it done. I'll be honest, you know, working on this documentary did have me um, asking more questions about it all than I had done before. But mm. there was never any doubt in my mind. I, would, I was always going to get the vaccinate, vaccination. So was my mum. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. It'll be fascinating watching, and and I absolutely agree with you. Uh, having the history told from your uh, point of view, where you're you're you know you're not in league with um, you know people peddling all sorts of extreme things, but this is what happened. This is what is still happening, and uh, that's the basis you should make your choices on, not not these extreme ones. I think that's so powerful. Say so, thank you so much for your time. Good talk. Hot talk. Hot talk. Bold talk. talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker watch it live on your smart tv the world headquarters of common sense talk radio